Hello, my friends. This is going to be a review of the Windless Steelcraft Oakshot Type 14 Arming Sword of Coolness -ness 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 -ness. Before we begin, there are some important disclosures that you should know and or read. First off, this review contains only my personal thoughts, which are relatively simple. It's meant to be entertaining and not necessarily informative, so keep that in mind as you listen to my ramblings. Secondly, I bought this sword new from Museum Replicas Limited. It's a brand new windless sword and I paid with it with my own money that I get from working at places and stuff. Also, swords are dangerous, be careful. Now you'd think I'd edit out that last clip, but editing is terrible so I don't do very much of it. Anyway, what I'm going to show you now is an unboxing. That's not something I generally do because unboxing isn't really relevant. A lot of times I buy swords secondhand and it's not representative of what you would get from a manufacturer, but in this case it is. Now what you can see is that the sword came extremely well packed and came with all sorts of pamphlets for information for Sword Addicts Anonymous and well it's not really that, it's more stuff for like buying, like if your drug dealer gave you like a pamphlet with different types of crack you could buy. It's kind of like that for sword aficionados. The other important thing to note is that everything is individually wrapped and has a little bits of plastic on it. The sword also came in oil. Oil on the blade, oil on the metal parts on the scabbard. The grip was wrapped. It, honestly, this is a really remarkably great job at wrapping. I hope they don't charge a lot for the wrapping. But anyway, it's a really good wrapping job and I have to commend them at it. I will include a link to the Museum Replicas website where I got this sword in the description below. What I'd like to highlight here though is the discrepancies between the measurements on the website and the measurements of the sword I received. What I got was a little bit shorter and a little bit wider in terms of the blade width near the crossguard, but the thickness of the blade is the same as is the weight, and I have to commend them on that. It's tough to get them exactly on, on the nuts when it comes to the weight. The point of balance and center of percussion were also not noted, and I've listed them here for people that are interested in that kind of stuff. One additional note is that the blade does have a distal taper. It goes from 5mm down to about 4mm. It's hardly worth noting, but it's there, so I did note it. Enough about all that crap, let's talk about the sword. Here's the peen, not the penis. The peen, it's a little block right there, and you can see it's done pretty well. The grip is also very nice. It's stitched well, and it's simple, but nice. It has this windless mark on it. I'm not super really in love with it. I'd almost like it more if it didn't have that, but it does, so just fucking great. Anyway, let's move on to the shape. Here you can see the shape. Is it a good shape? Well, how about this? If I superimpose this Type 14 image that I found on the Googles, then yeah, it kind of matches the thing, but the grip is a little long, and I don't know, maybe it's my superimposing skills that suck. I would still say that the thing looks like the thing, and overall I don't care, it's really sexy. I got the blade sharpened as well, and you can see that the MRL sharpening service puts on like a chisel tip. It's not bad, but it's not great. The thing I don't like about the blade as well is that it has all these ripples along the surface, which you can kind of see here. And honestly though, that's expected at a blade of this price, which I got as a deal of the day for like 120 bucks, so I'm not really bitching. Here's a look at the scabbard. You can see that it's pretty straightforward and simple. There's nothing really to write home about, but the simple fact is I got a sword for like $120 and it came with a leather scabbard. And that's, that's pretty cool. Even though it, I don't know, it has this unsightly bulge here. Kind of like when my, I put my iPhone in tight pants or something. As tradition dictates, I am now going to do the choppy choppy part. But before I do, I'm gonna smack this bitch up and show it who's boss. Actually, no, that's, that's not what I'm doing. I'm trying to find the center of percussion, which is something I noted earlier in the review. Also, you can see me flailing the sword around like a dumbass, and effectively, I noticed that it's poking me in the wrist a little bit. As a side note, I don't study HEMA, so I don't honestly know how to hold the sword properly. I'm swinging it like a bat, and I realize that there are going to be some adverse effects from that. Now, before I kill my water bottle targets, I'm going to dazzle them with my balancing skills to death. No, that, again, point of balance noted earlier in the review. What I can say about how the sword handles, though, is that it's a little tip-heavy. It feels hefty in the hand, and that's probably not uncommon for a sword like this. I've had a few other arming swords of similar size and stature, and they all feel a little tip-heavy. What I can say, though, is that the blade cuts surprisingly well. This is kind of what I'm thinking. Well, that was, that was easier than I thought it would be. Okay, yeah, maybe, I, maybe I'm like a super ninja or something. Uh, no, no, I'm not. Uh, but that was cool. Yeah, neat. Anyway, 
The point is that uh, it cut actually surprisingly well. The blade isn't super sharp, and so I expected that it would not cut super well, and frankly, it, it had actually cut through the water bottles better than a lot of swords cut through water bottles. And I don't know how to swing it, so that, that's a good thing, right? Now on with the thrusting. Uh, it, it pokes through a water bottle pretty good, and honestly, I'm only testing it on water bottles, and that isn't really the greatest medium to show you how awesome a sword is, but there are lots of other videos that show people chopping stuff with these swords. The point is that I just got it. I don't want to break it. This isn't a destructive test, but I thought I'd give you a little bit of water bottle cutting goodness just to appease your palate. Swing and a miss! There we go. Just the tip. That's what I was aiming for, totally the whole time. For what it's worth, though, I would totally feel comfortable cutting harder targets with this sword, and I, I wouldn't worry about it, and I, I, if I had the forethought of doing it, I would have. After doing some minor cutting, what I can see is that the blade really hasn't sustained... Oh, no, wait, there's a fatal crack in the blade. It's super broken, and it's all sorts of... Gen yeah, no, it's fine. It's totally fine. That's what I meant to say. It's perfectly fine. There's no scuffs, even smacking it into the stand doesn't make it show any sort of signs of damage or really any marring or bedingers that are bad. Now I'm walking away. Now I'm telling you that it doesn't sustain all sorts of cuts and dings, but I suppose it'd actually be better to show you, wouldn't it? Because I'm smart like that. Here you can see after the cutting that there's not really any sustained damage or problems. Now I wiped the water off the blade, but... There's not really any problems to speak of. I keep saying that, but honestly, this sword was about $120, and uh, I think I got my money's worth. That's really the bottom line, right? Is it worth it? Uh, yeah, yeah. The deal of the day was pretty awesome. It has some issues. It's got a big old space in the grip area, but again, 120 bucks, not bitching. The grip is nice, though, and, uh, you know, the sword cut well, and it... It's heavy and it's wavy and it's got some issues, but it's really not terribly expensive. Now, if it were the retail price, that'd be a little bit different, I think. I would probably be... There's a lot more options when you talk about $240-ish for a sword. But uh, at 120 bucks, I don't think you can go wrong. So that's really what I'd have to say. If you can catch this on the MRL deal of the day, I think it's a pretty awesome thing to get. And uh, I would recommend it. If you're paying full retail, it's not bad if you want a sword of this type, but there are a few other options available, and you have to kind of balance out what do you want to get, and is this it? For example, you can see these. Here's the Windless Sword matched up next to Ronin Katana's European offering, as well as a early medieval sword from Hanwei. Now you can see that I've listed the prices. They're all approximately in the same ballpark, but nothing about the Windless really made it stand out for me. I would say, frankly, that I would rather have an offering from Ronin Katana if I'm paying full price or Hanway than I would the Windless Sword. That said, I got this some bitch for $120, and at $120, I'd say it's an awesome value. It holds its own against the other two swords that I put up against it, but it doesn't really stand out either. So, at $120, I'm like, hell yeah. At $240, I'm kind of like, meh. Anyway, that would be the rating I'd give it. If you got 240 bucks, it's kind of like, eh. And that is all the relevant or interesting information I have for you. Thank you for watching.